good afternoon guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here <clears throat> my name is Marie and I create content around lifestyle and travel uh, for the purposes of this video I'm gonna say uh, what I do so I work in travel uh, I work as a operations and finance manager for a travel uh, no. company the purpose of this video is I want to tailor it to be like tell me about yourself a video or a tell me about yourself question like the question you'll be asked in interviews you know tell me about yourself usually what happens is when you're asked this question a lot of us fumble my first interview ever was with kpmg uh my background is in accounting i'll give also a summary of my education so uh, let me just give you this short story to start with that interview with kpmg i was so excited you know uh as an accountant we used to be told you have to work in the big four accounting firms so that is deloitte that's kpmg that's uh, pwc and uh, ey ey there used to be five um, i've not really been keeping up with uh the accounting stuff anymore these days mm. I yeah know what to do with my hands right now uh so this baby girl asked uh, hey Marie, uh, okay, there was a bit of a conversation. I'm not gonna read the whole conversation, but uh, what we ended up is, uh, agreeing with Carol, her name is Carol. Uh, she said a sit down video will work. Uh, maybe we can, uh, maybe you can explain your educational background as well as your career journey. So essentially, when you go to an interview and somebody asks you tell me about yourself this is the exact information they're asking to know your career journey so far and your educational background so that they can see if you have the necessary qualifications to to fit in, into that role that they have advertised so, so basically i was telling you when i went for that kpmg interview i really fumbled until this one of these interviewers she was a lady she told me like we can tell that you know you're really excited to to be in this kind of space but you shouldn't share that much on an interview so i'm gonna advise you this is what she said i'm gonna just give you some tips for your next interview and right from that moment i already knew i was not gonna get that job i was so dejected because <laughs> every time now when i go for an interview i'm better prepared i always make sure i prepare myself because after i fail that kpmg interview i will i will always know what i'm talking about because i hadn't even structured my answers to fit into what you know kpmg looks for or what even the role itself was looking for yeah so that's something you need to check on always investigate the role on the company beforehand the internet is there the internet is your friend go on linkedin look at how people who are in that company are like how are they dressing like mimi i will investigate to the last thing are they applying makeup it's like me i will check stuff even like that by the way when i'm going for an interview so this this year this was my first notebook that i used to prepare myself when i'm going for interviews like sometimes when i was digging i saw i'm just like oh my god you know she was such a hopeful girl i even have like some questions here of you know what are your strengths what are your weaknesses tell me about uh, yourself here yeah, written my name is maria kanga i'm 24 year old finalist from the university of nairobi uh <laughs> should i read this whole thing actually if i tell you this then i would have covered my educational background so <clears throat> i'm just gonna read what i wrote here tell me about yourself if you can see if you can see you'll see it's that question i was answering here so i have many more of those that i wrote about you know interview strengths weaknesses uh have you ever worked with a team a time you failed at a task where do you see yourself in five years? Why do you want to work for us? How do you handle pressure? Why should we hire you? Like literally, I uh, went on YouTube. I looked for all the questions that people get asked on interviews. Then I prepared uh, responses for that. Then now I would practice these responses until they become like second nature. Like I, I just know it off head. It's not like I have to go and and so read what i said so just a summary is that uh i was in the university of nairobi i did a bachelor's in commerce i did a i majored in finance and 
I did a minor in human resource. Like you don't really say, okay, this is a minor, but what I did is I chose all my units to be human resource so that by the end of the course, I would have done human resource and I, I would have also done finance. I wanted to do human resource because I felt like, you know, in every job you'll interact with people. So I need to learn about human beings as a resource. Yeah, so that's why I chose to do the minor in human resource. Finance, I always wanted to do finance. Like I'm very good in math and yeah, so that's why I did finance. Then I did the CPA in Strathmore. Then uh, yeah, so this is 20... This is 20, what, 2020. This was 2020. So at this point, I've still not started my master's. So now, I mean, of course, my CV now, my education background, I've, upgrade, I've upgraded it to I graduated now that year. Here, you see, I'm talking about I'm looking to graduate in December. So that December of 2020, I graduated. So, of course, I also updated my CV to reflect that I had graduated from uni. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's essentially my education background or what I, I would tell an employer uh, is my education background. Then now moving on to my career journey is, like I said here, uh, I, worked, I worked for a while for Prudential Life Assurance. Now that was selling commission. If like that... That is one of the hardest jobs I believe I have done in, in this like career journey. Hmm. Selling insurance is not for the weak, guys. Selling insurance. Respect people who sell insurance because you will go to someone's office. They will keep you there. They will listen to all of your stories. You will talk and talk and talk and you'll tell them how this education policy is better than this. Selling insurance. Like, generally, sales jobs are usually very hard. Like, if you ask me, sales jobs, hey, you need a lot of self-confidence to be in sales. So kudos to you if you're in sales right now. Yeah, so that was my first job. This I did in 2018. Yeah, this for sure I did this in 2018. And let me tell you, from that job, I was never even paid one cent. Attach Lingi Woja. Because I never converted any sales. I just visited so many people selling, telling them, telling them, but none of them ever closed. So I quickly realized that this is, um, I'm not going to make it by selling insurance. That I, I, I started selling insurance because I saw also my dad had been in insurance for a long time. So I thought, ah, you know, my father's daughter, I can also sell insurance. Ah, let's go to Prudential. Let's get that job. But what I'm still grateful for about Prudential to these days, I made like one of my best friends. I met them at Prudential. Shout out to George. Shout out to George. I met him at Prudential. That's uh, about five, six, seven years ago. Uh, yeah, so after Prudential, uh, I remember I was on long holiday when I worked in Prudential. So went back to school. Then when I was in school, I happened to hear of another role uh, with the, logis the logistics company here I'm talking about. It was a business development associate, and this was just mainly just finding, it's business development is finding new opportunities, new clients, stuff like that. So it was a startup, so like the job description was not like very defined that's the thing with startups yeah like, so it was a startup so with startups you'll find that your job is not very well defined you might be called to do more than has been written on your contract and i feel sometimes like you should be ready to you should be ready to nini to to do more than you've been called for in your job because remember you've promised to be an asset and sometimes assets have to be applied more like hard working as that black black bra mm. So, yeah, that was the second company I worked for. Now, that one I left. <laughs> Honestly, like some of these jobs, I usually leave. Okay, for, for Prudential, like clear cut, like I'm not making any money. For me, it's always two things. Either I'm learning or I'm earning. So I wasn't earning in that one. So that's why I left. Now, in the second one, <clears throat> Ion I feel at that point, really, I was getting paid so much money and I just didn't know what to do with that money. I remember... I just used to talk at work. At the time I was still in campus. So I feel like I have to work in secret. Because if my parents find out I have a job, then I'm not attending classes, then it would be a problem. So I used to like never say that I have a job. I used to disappear at 9 o'clock, come back at 5 o'clock. At the end of the month, I have my thousands there in my in my bank account. And I'm just here bowling in campus. So yeah, so that was my second job. 
uh, uh, that one I left by the way due to solidarity. There was a friend of mine who I felt like Alikwa released <laughs> because of unfair reasons, and after that, like I, I, I just had beef. I just had beef of why did they fire my friend? Why did they <laughs> like? I mean, I feel like there was more reasons. There was more than one reason why I left, but it wasn't really like good reasons. I didn't leave that job for a good reason, but I, I'm glad I left that job because it showed me that, you know, you can leave a job and get another job. Like you need to have an abundance mentality mentality when it comes to money and when it comes to opportunities. Because if you just hold on to something so hard, it's because you don't believe you'll find another one. You should be ready to quit. If you're not learning and you're not earning, that's when you know to, to quit. Now, moving on swiftly. <clears throat> After I have left this job, after I've left this job, then this was just when I was towards completing now uni. So this is when I get the KPMG interview. I think, yeah, this was when I got the KPMG interview. So this, most of these questions, I wrote them in preparation for the KPMG interviews because everything before that, for me, I didn't take them as serious jobs. I just took them as, you know, keeping myself busy, just like sort of building up, fleshing out my, my CV. That's what I was doing, like back then in campus. I didn't realize that was what I was doing because me, I thought we were just having fun. Mm. But I'm so glad looking back that as much as I wasted a lot of my time in campus crying over over boys, I also, I also gathered a, a bit of experience in terms of the work side of things. Yeah, so it's when I left... I left the logistics company is when I went for the KPMG interview, which I did not get, but which I learned so much from, yeah? So after this, then I got a internship opportunity with Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. So I worked for, like, was it, <laughs> it was supposed to be a three months internship. Then it, I ended up working for one month because then COVID started. Yeah, so... Uh, now, by that time, I have all my, you know, I have this toolkit. Now, this book, I've stayed with it all these years, and I'm going to pass it down to either my my brother or, or my cousin, Diana, because this one here is gold. This one here is gold. And also, you can make a bid for it on the comment section. The bidding starts at 100,000. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, so uh, I worked with KCA for one month. I was working at the at the at their school, the East Africa School of Aviation. I was a finance intern. So... Uh, I remember I, I loved that job also. I made some friends, and then there was a way. There was, there was some ways where you could like get some extra cash here if you did a bit of overtime. So I would do a bit of extra hours. I would come in on Saturdays, then we'd make that extra five hundred here. I don't know one thousand there, and it was really good because that time I'm living with my parents, so I didn't really have any expenses. Plus the place where I was staying. Like my parents' home and the, the workplaces are walking distance, so I never used to panda any matatus or anything. I didn't spend any money. I didn't spend any money when it came to to like food because I would carry food from home to have during lunch. Or if I've not carried food, if I've not carried food, we would be given food for free because I used to go and do like some cashier work at the at the restaurant. So when you work at the cashier, they, they used to give you free food. Yeah, and it was really good food. Yeah, <laughs> I need to finish this and get back to work. Uh, yeah, so that I was sorted like that. Then what happened with that one is COVID came. So of course the first people to be <laughs> let go are the interns. So in any home. So of course we went home. Now between, this was, this was March when COVID came. Now between March and September is when like I feel a lot a lot of what I did has contributed to who I am today. That interview Ilikwazila Zinez was in in portions. You have to do an online one and then now after you've passed the online one, then you go to the office, then I think they'll call you back and something like it was the step to step kind of process. So I re remember when we were doing the first one. Wakani to me are like an Excel thing. I that one, my whole family, my whole family was there sitting with me you doing that interview. Today. Just know I copied your interview. I, like, okay, guy, maybe gonna future employers on our watch. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. To okay, yeah, my whole family helped. Like, shout out to my family also because these guys, they have really, they have really been supportive of, of all the ups and downs of my career, of my choices. Like me, I usually just choose. Like, if I feel like I'm not happy here, I'm moving. Uh, Sorry guys, camera went off again. 
Yeah, so I was pretty confident coming from that interview. I was so confident. I even texted my mom. I told her I'm definitely getting this job. When I got home, I was just telling guys, I feel like I had performed really well in the interview and I like I was almost certain that I would get the job. You'll find that when you've when you've really done the interview well, you usually know. You know, like you just know even from the responses or the the way these people they're reacting to you. You'll know. That's why always, always, when they ask you at the end of the interview, do you have any questions? Always ask a question. Always ask a question, a question like, um, okay, me, for me, what I, I would ask is, like, what is expected of someone who who is in this about the role. role. I'll ask like the opportunities they offer to their employees. Those are the kinds of questions I ask now. But of course, when you're at the beginning of your career, try to show allegiance from the get-go because they'll remember you for that as compared to someone who just like, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions because they'll remember, oh, that can the the Ali Wiliza if you know uh, what is expected from someone who is accepted in that position they'll see the interest you have so that's a pro tip always ask a question like it doesn't necessarily mean need to be that one but just find a question that is is relevant to your your career or your industry yeah uh, so anyway leaving that job i felt really confident i knew i would get the job so it was really shocking to me when they came back to me and they told me i was the first runners up like like what I mean is I was the number two. <clears throat> if you've heard me talking about this story before, you know, I don't I don't understand why you... I mean, I appreciate the fact that they gave me feedback. It's very important for companies to give feedback. So if you're an employer out there, like, like the least you can do after someone has spent their time to come to your office to show the interest in the role, the least you can do is tell them whether or not they get the job. There's another... Dini, interview I went like okay no I think when was this 2022 2022 yeah and like I I did the interview everything and there was never a res a response of whether you you got the job or you didn't get the job so I feel like it's it's really a, a show of courtesy for for companies for employers uh, recruiting managers anyone in the human resource field to also communicate back you know you either got the job or you didn't get the job so good thing is these guys they responded to me they told me i was number two and they would keep me they would keep my file and if ever there was an opportunity they would call me back and how many times do you usually actually get called back so me once they had told me that i just knew you know i didn't get the job so i was really dejected because i had believed in what I had done for your interview kwa a one kind of work. So I was just like, eh, hey, cool, cool. Now I didn't get that one. I am gonna have to hustle. And as I said, during COVID, like I felt like it was a bit harder for people trying to get jobs during COVID because now people, first of all, they're being laid off. So why would you believe you're gonna? Yeah, so basically, like I didn't have much hope in getting an employment opportunity at the time because, first of all, it was COVID. I was a fresh graduate. I didn't really feel like I had like any experience at all because I just worked like three, three, six, I don't know, four months here, three months there. Like there was nothing really I had done like specific that my CV could speak for itself. So I really had to advocate for myself when I was doing these interviews at the time. So uh, I continued applying, applying, but it was a bit slow. It was a bit slow. <sighs> I have a bit of a cold, guys. So I'm sorry if I, I sound weird. Yeah, so it was uh, quite difficult to get like uh, opportunities at the time during COVID. But like now, this is when I decided to start my blog because I was like, uh, I could get maybe if if I can't get someone to hire me, then I need to get something to do that can make me a bit of money here and there. So then I decided to create uh, the corporate chick now my my website. Essentially, the corporate, it's spelt as the corporate chicks, you know, that word corporate uh, was not to mean that I was someone who is in the corporate kind of sector, but I also wanted to add some elegance, some chic, some sort of femininity to the, 
to the vlog so that when you just come across it it gives you the vibes of this is a female kind of space you know bachelor yeah, corporate right. chick so i started my my blog during that time because i really didn't have anything else to do so just writing i was just writing and then i've always really been interested in traveling like from a young age i used to be in like kws clubs like i would go on those trips i'm just really a wildlife kind of girl i'm a vago also so me and nature we are like this even when i choose places to live i usually have to choose the suburbs leafy 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 places places with trees trees i really am into nature like even okay let me just stop here like i give too many stories tell me about yourself that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying so <laughs> mm. I, then i started reaching out to like brands i remember i would write like probably if if you're a, like of course they're not watching this because who whom do I think I am like I would even reach out to content creators big ones I'm like I would like to to write about you I like to write about your business so my my like my aim was I wanted to reach out to businesses and write about them and maybe give them a you know uh a platform to like especially the small businesses to give them a platform to just maybe market their businesses but like i really believed in the idea at the time uh but i didn't get to work with so many people because again the blog was just starting out nobody knows me so i was just marketing am among my friends who who are also just campus graduates like yeah so it was just like i was just trying to make ends meet and then kidogo kidogo i started getting approached by companies like uh Batu's African Safaris, which I worked with, I wrote a, an article about them. They gave me some uh, very nice trips. I went with them about three, four trips. Yeah, Nairobi National Park, we went, I think, once or twice. Then we also went to this place. I forget the name, but it was outside of Nairobi. And then also they would give me, like, more slots, like, to also bring my friends. So they wouldn't really pay me in money, but they would... Wait. <laughs> Okay, my cat he's just jumping jumping around here like he's just everywhere in the background give me money i felt really good that like i was i was learning something about travel at the time ps kumbuka i didn't know i would end up in travel so i was just doing it cuz just cuz i was interested and i had time on my hands and it was fun you know the only winning is akwenda nairobi national park cuz of course my parents are not paying for that they don't have any money so yeah going for free sounded like a very good deal to me Yeah so that's why I, start, I, I sort of got into the safari business kidogo kidogo this is before now I've gotten the last job before this one so then uh this is now between April to August April to September also you can say so uh these guys they reach out to me the the guys from the last interview I've done the ones who say they'll keep my file they reach out to me a few months later they're like there's a position that has opened up but it's a uh, actually when i told this story i said it was an accounting position before no 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 before it was a data analytics position data analyst data analyst position so like it was sort of yes it required someone who has done bachelor in commerce and has a cpa but it wasn't really accounting so when they reached out to me the second time now they gave me an opportunity to work for the company but on an accounting capacity so i was going to go in as a accounts uh, assistant so i got in as an account assistant uh, of course the the things there reconciliations payables receivables invoices just basic accounting things that you need to do and that is where i feel like i learned a lot of things that i know now in terms of office work because me honestly like i don't know where people learn about you know things like how to use a printer how to use like how to just carry yourself in a corporate kind of space you know that's why i learned i learned that that like work ethic so even if i didn't like end up earning so much in that role over the two years span that i stayed there i learned a lot and remember it's always about two things earning and learning so this is the this is the opportunity the career like the job that really introduced me to now grown up like work kind of life work kind of ethics yeah so it was a good role for for the first say one one year let me say one year because after that everything else was was downward now another pro tip maybe i should mention from the book <laughs> another pro well it's sort of tied to like what will your last boss say about you or why did you leave your last job 
don't ever talk <laughs> badly about why you left your last job no matter how bad it was when you left i know some of you most of us know how to swim but let's not burn the bridges let's not burn the bridges unless i don't know what there's some circumstances of course that you might have to burn the bridge but then if you can help it don't burn the bridge getting into the job usually starts like this it's a uh, uphill it's like a plane when it's taking off we'll take off then it'll get to the highest place that it can possibly get then now it's a plateau so it, it sort of evens out and then at that point then it's you're just sort of stagnant so at this point it was like two years into the role and then now i started feeling that stagnation coming and then there was also the, the strain of i was feeling i was living paycheck to paycheck like i was not able to like have any savings like i was not able even to do nice things for myself or even for my family for my brothers like i just felt like i'm, I'm putting so much effort into my work but i just don't feel like it's rewarding per se rewarding in the sense that i'm not learning and i'm not earning again always remember those are my two uh important things when it comes to to work yeah so at this point like it, it wasn't a very easy decision for me to come uh, to come to to quit the last job as compared to how it might have been easier for me to quit uh, previous jobs when i was young i've always been of that belief that if you want to grow you need to get out of your comfort zone uh, of course the first first few months of of working you you're getting that salary month to month ash nothing beats that feeling of making your own money nothing like you cannot convince me there's something that beats making your own money like mm -mm. You can go and argue with your shadow but mm. quickly gets old like after a while unazoea kulipa hizo bills then now you're like you need to go to the next level so this is where i'm talking about it'll start like this then it will go like this now you need to keep uh, improving your skills and you also need to keep updating your cv you need to do courses online it's not a must that you have access to like a university education or you know is of it like you have to go to school these days you can do courses online which can go a long way into building your your, your soft skills even yeah and so now another reason why i came to leave my last job is because there started being some sort of strain with me going to school like uh my employer started having a problem with with me having to leave work by around 4:30 uh, instead of 5:30 to go to to class because my class would start at 5:30 for us in Strathmore you have to take like a uh, a letter from your employer to be taken into the graduate program so they had like signed they had stamped it for me when i was starting out so i just felt like it was quite weird for them now i'm in the middle of the program and then now they start telling me you know you can't do this you can't leave at this time to go to school and some of those times is when i had like exams so that was really stressful for me like i would find like you just couldn't go on exam as in i just go there to the parking and cry like nearly kwa nalia is of those days like every day every day nearly kwa tuna lia ni like why is it like why does it have to be so hard it became harder for me to to be able to even perform my duties because i wasn't really happy in the place that i was and then such of frustrations are shule plus now i just felt like nimi stagnate sana it's paycheck to paycheck like for this for me to have to live from this position like i feel like it was more reasonable things that led me to live as compared to the to the other one so fast forward now i apply i give i hand over my resignation and then uh, i'm now serving my notice period one month notice then it's like a week a week like this story just fascinates me so much because it's like a week before ni maliza notice period and let me tell you serving notice period is one of the hardest things you'll have to do in your in your work life because people will give you side eyes people will give you side eyes because they know you're leaving even you don't want to be there then they don't want you there so it's just that tussle being in that kind of environment one week to me finishing my notice period i get called for an interview to work for a travel company what i was gonna get as salary in now this new role was gonna be lesser than what i was getting now at the time but the way i was so frustrated by like the the, the role and just the friction i was willing to accept like like a decline in pay just to get some peace of mind i was willing yani 
Yo, me, I'm telling you, being an adult is just, is just ghetto. I need to finish this video. <laughs> it, it went off again. R apologies, 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 guys. So, now, my journey in Marvels has been also interesting on its own in that it wasn't, first of all, it wasn't Marvels. At first, it was uh, full of Africa. It was an entirely different company. Entirely different people were running the company at the time. And yeah the, like we've come a long way since then uh if you don't know us check us on TripAdvisor. we are currently number one on trip advisor yeah so when i got into marvels like i got in with a sales position then uh i mean after my probation period i was able to sit down again during the like you know after three months of probation this is not something that i knew like back then when I was in the other company because if I knew this uh, I would have gone back after probation and just maybe renegotiated my salary because I, I know some of my former colleagues had done that and actually it had worked out in their favor you know also maybe I also didn't have enough tools back then to know what I needed to to do or to know how to speak up for myself at the time so, so now is this the end of my journey absolutely not in fact i'm just getting started so, this is just the beginning of my journey and i don't want anyone to look at me and think that i was an overnight success i've never been an overnight success i've been sort of putting in the the work pole pole and see at nilianza kitambo at even campus watu watu wakicheza mimi nilikuwa serious pia mimi nilikuwa na cheza mimi nilikuwa kwa hiyo game vibaya sana i was part of the game but then when i got to third year for the i started being a bit serious then i started like looking for internships jobs stuff to do yeah so now what I'd, i would advise you if you're watching this from a perspective of being in employment already keep updating your your skills and keep applying for new positions like you have to be in like the first person you're loyal to is to you and your qualifications i'm not saying don't be loyal to the company you work for shout out to my bosses shout out to the company shout out to my work colleagues shout out to my clients shout out to everyone who is has one way or the other prayed for me to be in this place i do not take it for shout out to my mother shout out to my mother my mom blesses me every day and that's the reason why i'm here so this is not the end of my journey it's certainly the beginning but from this point i believe that i can maybe uh, share a little light and maybe this little light of mine can shine a light on your path that's a lot of use of the word light but i'm also sending you a lot of love and light um <laughs> i know this is a very mother goes on your end but let me end this video here because my camera is going off now 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 uh i will definitely catch you on the next vlog i love you and i mean it thank you for listening to me bubble over here for 20 to 25 minutes i don't know how long this video will be but once again uh my name is marie it's been a pleasure to share with you this part of my story and i hope in future we can share more of uh, sit down videos i've really enjoyed giving you guys this story so thank you for clicking on this video and for watching it, it up until this end if you want me to continue doing videos like this please leave a comment on this video and like this video so that you can show me that you're actually interested in, in knowing these kinds of stuff if it's work related if you have a specific kind of video you want to see make sure you leave a comment like carol thank you so much carol for having us do this video i wouldn't have had the opportunity to share if you had not asked that question so thank you so much carol and thank you for everyone who has supported me this far on the on this new journey of mine that is youtube so uh i love you and i mean it and i will see you on the next video